Five, four, three, two, one. Happy birthday to me, baby. Panampo is in my arms. Happy birthday to me, baby. Panampo. Aww. Welcome to Tiger Belly. I have a, we have a new baby right here. We have the baby from Eraser Head that Mom Kalila gave me as a gift. She had some artist. Who's the artist? Um, Jeremy. I think his last name is Rimmel or Rimmel. Jeremy Rimmel. Right, but his um, Instagram handle is um, Miss Creation Toys. I Miss know. Creation Toys. Show him Baby Pinopo. Right here, Baby Pinopo from the movie Erase Your Head, and it's mine. And it's and his no favorite David it. Lynch movie. It's one of my favorite David Lynch movies, and I'm going to. His little tongue sticking out, so I'm going to do a little <laughs> bit of like incest. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where'd you get that, Lila? Which? Welcome to uh, here. Can you oh hold my baby God! Just <laughs> 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 baby Vanopo. So um, I'm telling you what we're doing. Right. I'm a, I we're, okay. So we have a guest today. It's um, James Vanderbeek. Ooh. But I'm a little nervous. So I wanted to start up before he even got here, because I'm a little nervous. He's a legitimate. I feel like I never saw Dawson's Creek, I but did. but I feel like he's a legitimate television star, and he's handsome and he's super nice. But I wanted to start. I wanted to talk about gross things before he shows up because I don't want to taint his um, heart He's a family with, man. with our yeah with our destructive minds. Yeah. <laughs> now we saw a movie last night for my birthday. It's called Mother, and it's basically like a fever dream. It's a uh, nightmare. It's a, ni a nightmare. It's kind of pornish nightmare. Pornish. There's nothing pornish about it. To me, it was. Um, <laughs> it was kind of a nightmare. And um, I don't really know what it's about. I know that it has to do with God and the environment, Adam and Eve, about narcissism, how women, they don't have a voice, you know? Or the unheard. Yeah, my brother was sitting next to me. Or the abused and unheard. My brother was sitting next to me, and my brother was like, what the fuck is it? Every, every five minutes, <laughs> what the fuck is this? What, you like this? He goes, are you having fun? He goes, oh my God, I can't fucking believe this. How much is he talk in the theater? And a then lot. in the meantime, Ilani and I are like crying because we get it. There's something. I mean, you can pull your own, you know, um, parallels from it. It's it's what resonates with you, right? So it's basically open to many types of interpretations. Many but, type of interpretations. But I don't know. I felt very. <laughs> I loved it so much, and I I, I honestly didn't. I didn't want to be touched by Bobby afterwards because I felt oh. like yeah. he was I the was the, the Javier Bardem in the movie. Yeah. Mm. And but in many ways he plays a poet and he's um famous, I guess. People know him. And she thought that I was that character really kind of It's like he doesn't really love her, he just loves to be loved. Right. Whoa. Um but that's the most don't ruin it for people. Yeah, don't well, it's one of those movies you can only watch once. Yeah, you can never watch it again. You no, can't repeat. watch it again. It's no. too, no it's, too it's way too much. But I would give it a A minus. Oh. Uh, it would, yeah, it's pretty good. You say Oscar winner probably? Something? No, people hate I it. I think that people will either completely get it or completely hate it. There's no middle ground. There's no middle I mean, no, there are like, reviews I, like this is the worst movie ever I don't ever think made. anyone walks out of there saying it was okay. I don't think there's there'll be any of that. It's either you comple it completely resonates or it does not at all. Or you just walk out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's that powerful. Cut and dry. It's uh, uh, powerful. I don't know. And, but there's a point in the movie where it's either you get it or you don't. Well, in the beginning, you're like, oh, because you don't even know their names, the characters' names. It does, if, if the credits go down. It, it just says Lauren, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, mother. Oh. Mm. Right? Javier Bardem, guy. I like guy. movies like that. You take what Ed you Harris take from it. This? Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh. Ed Harris is good in it. He is really Amazing. weird in he's it. He's good in everything. Yeah. yeah. He's a fucking But you guys freak, should definitely go watch it. I think if you're dark and demented like the both of us, you'll definitely like this. Yeah. And then um, also, I don't like talking about showbiz no more on the on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But Friday night, I, for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing? Nothing. Friday night for the first time. All right, so I I'm a part of an a I have agents. You guys know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, they invited me to this Emmy party. Okay. Fancy. I've never been invited to it. The first thing I do is when we show up, I see Elijah Schlesinger, I see Matt Bronger, I see all these comics. They go, we come every year, <laughs> and I've never been invited. 
which destroyed me, kind of. Brett Moran. Oh, this is how I make my deals at this party. <laughs> but then um, we had a good time. It was uh, it was fun. You guys, before star studded. No, not only was it star studded, I get it now. That's the club. Oh, the club you're the talking. Club We're not talking about. The club. Talking about. That's the club. The key. To I mean, to. like, I knew it was the club because I ran into my one and only hall pass. Whoa! Who? Damn. I mean, who? Brent Moore. You were like fucking putting a fucking who hole in the back of my head because I kept looking who is, who at him. Edgar Ramirez. Yeah, you can suck his dick. I don't give a fuck. But we were shoulder to shoulder, and he looked at me once, and then Bobby is like, "He's not. He didn't give me permission. Initially, he did. He was like, which okay, he's that's not. A he pass. wasn't on the list. He is on the list. No, but I never heard his name before. So it's like, oh my uh, You God. can put him on the list, but tell me now. I have an actual list. I have to write it down. His name. So you have Tom Hardy on there. Mm-hmm. You got fucking um, who else is on there? Um, Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington, yeah. John Snow's on there. Edgar Ramirez. Okay, now I'm gonna put Edgar Ramirez on Matthias it. Matias Schonart. Okay, okay. How, how many? <laughs> hey, bitch, how many guys Wait, are the, on this the list? Likely, <laughs> I know, seriously, how yeah. many? Okay, look, the likelihood of me actually running into these people are slim to none, right? So that's why I knew this was the club because I was like, oh my god, Edgar Ramirez is right next to me. Yeah, mm. I can smell him. Yeah. My halt passes you right here. His dick. <laughs> I can make a sniff, deal sniff. if I want. But obviously, like he's way too hot. He would never even. But I'm just saying, in my brain. Oh, I would. I would you know what I would love? You try to hit on him. I would never in front hit of on me. Just listen, and him reject you. I would have went on the ground Laugh. and started convulsing. <laughs> I like laughing. Like I would. I would have laughed right in your fucking face. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never, never. I, ever. And then if he goes, yeah, but let's go do it. I'll be like, hey, just as long as I can tape. Ew. Oh, speaking of taping. Wait, what? I had a really bad dream, you guys. Oh, dreams suck. Is it bad? It's it like poetry. Really I hate it. No. Explain. Okay, so I um, I dreamt that I got scopolamine, the burudanga like you did in mm-hmm. Colombia. Mm-hmm. Oh and I dreamt that some people coerced me to make a sex tape, Um, you know, without me knowing basically i was mm-hmm. like a zombie yeah. okay and then they released it on the interwebs and then they basically um i told bobby and then he didn't believe me that i was raped and he was like no you cheated on me i can see you were enjoying it on camera and i was like no i was burudangad and then he was like no no well no. I, I, let me just say something that's bullshit and he broke up because with how there's no way it. to yeah. prove if you were burudangad or not <laughs> Bur-a-dunga. so if i'm i'm watching a tape yeah and you're like going yes I'm going to swallow it or what you say thing, right? <laughs> yeah, do it in my <laughs> eyes. You know, I, I'm going to be like, yeah, she's into it. Yeah. If you're tied up and you're passed out, then... Yeah, but that's the thing about Burudanga. Look fuck at George. Buranda, you know, yeah. fuck you, George, for introducing Burudanga to our lives. You added another element to this. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so even if you're raped and you're Burudanga, just don't put yourself in that situation. Yeah. How? Well, first of all, it makes they could just, Someone could just go up and go... Like that. Well, don't let that happen. Wear a mask. Like, okay, someone's like, hey, sir, can you show me on this map? Like, had to show The Iron Sheik did that to Hulk Hogan. He backed up and he didn't get sprayed. Mm. It's not sprayed. He had, like, what that dust it's that they like do. It's like inhalation in anthrax. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Bobby. No, fuck you. All right, Edgar Ramirez, he's on the list. You yeah, only get three, and that's it. Who's on your list? I have nobody, because I love you. You're the only one in my life. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, another, another scandalous he said Nally thing Portman. happened. Yeah. At the party, what? Um, do you guys remember how we were talking about when you know first year of our relationship, Bobby would do fucked up things to me, like he would text other women, mm-hmm. like, "Hey, I'd fuck you without a condom, I'd raw dog you or like whatever." When you guys first started dating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe a year into it, mm. and then we ended. Uh, yeah, we would would fight about it. But Don't I'd, say the name. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna say the name. Jessica Chastain. No, Don't but she name. was there at the CAA party. She was there. Damn. Not just because she's Chastain, but the girl that. Oh, the girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, she was there. But she gave me a big hug. And she was like, but this is how fucking mm. fake women are. She knew that we were in a relationship when she was writing and flirting with Bobby in that way. But when she saw me, she was like, oh my God, Bobby, she's way too hot for you. Hi, how are you? And trying to be really sweet with me. Yeah, and in my Hollywood mind, nights. I'm like, you Hollywood ass political bitch. I know what the fuck you've been texting him, you know? But, but what did I do? I said, you guys catch up. I'll go grab a drink. And yeah. I like just exited. I didn't try to make my... Hey, she's not on my list. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't know and, why she uh, was ever, but oh, I know. Do the girl know that you knew? No, mm. and that's the that's it's why I saw the past. What are we even talking about right here? Right? <laughs> 
But there's this, there's a feeling of power so when I nervous. know something Vanderbeek, she doesn't. Vanderbeek's coming. I'm mm-hmm. so nervous. What are you gonna ask him? I don't even know. Am I gonna go? Because I want to go. You know what I want to say is just show me your dick now. No, you can't. He's a family man. I know, but like, I, if why I, do you guys I assume dick, that? Once He's I know worked him. with him, but what if he just wants to open up on the podcast? I don't know, but if he's not gonna, mm. he's he dipping. might, he might, he might, he might shock us. He might shock us. I need to have him on because I like him. He wants to be on the podcast, and I want to test my interview strength. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a test for you <laughs> because I mean, if we get like someone like Jim Norton, we know it's gonna just it's be gonna easy. go crazy, mm. right? But it's like we had your friend on. What's her name? Which one? Oh, the Samoan. The Samoan. Christine. One. Yeah. That was a challenge. But we had your, Jessica's cousin. Oh, my, oh God. my God. What never was? Released that we episode. never released it. Yeah, that was a nightmare. <laughs> and Surprise. she was the only paid guest. <laughs> we paid her. How much did I pay her? Like 200, 200 Oh, bucks. my God. What a <laughs> ripoff. <laughs> what a ripoff. So, um, yeah, I'm a little I'm nervous, but he's going to be here any second. Mm-hmm. So, why don't we st- sh- st- shut it down now or? No, yeah. let's keep talking. Want to keep going until he gets here? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm afraid. What if he cuts here and then I have to just like, get up and leave? Oh, you're the one who has to greet him at the door? I have to go get him. Okay. okay. I have to explain to him. I got to go. This is just an apartment. I'm going to get a house one day. <laughs> Can we do yeah. the whole story? Because <laughs> I had to do that with, you know, Eric Stone Street mm-hmm. and oh. Jordan. Like, you know. Do they care? No. Go, give know, us your I, spiel. What's your spiel? Yeah, what do you say when they you pick him up? I go, um, you know, <laughs> I, haven't doing good, I haven't been doing as good as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I bought it. I bought it a long time ago. You know, I was single. This was fine for me, <laughs> right? And they go, yeah, okay. And then they don't say anything, but you know, I'm 46. Mm-hmm. There's there's a part of me that says, why don't I have like a, a house? Or why Aren't... is there two vacuum cleaners in our podcast? That's really room? Yeah. funny. <laughs> why? Why is there a closet right here? Why doesn't any anything? Nothing works in this house. <laughs> Nothing. There's no um, outlets that work yeah, here. Yeah, nothing works. All our sinks are fucking clogged because you fucking shave your fucking pubes. Long, no, because of your long fucking Filipino hair. Why do you put so much Filipino Why hair? Why would I put hair over the sink? This dude, if you look at look at our bathroom sink, it's just hair and water mm. over the sink. You think it's my fucking pubes? It is your pubes. Wait, why would you I don't have a lot of pubes, bitch. Show me. Show me now. Look. If Okay. So look at that. That's a lot of fucking I know, pubes. but they're on my body. They're not released. <laughs> We're saying that this stuff has been released and been clogging shit. What are you reaching out for? What kind of I'm trying to write a uh, time code in case I have to blur any video. No, you don't oh, blur no. pubes. You're not blurting pubes. You're not going to blur it. You're going to blur it. <laughs> blur, you gotta blur, uh, blur pubes, bro? Wait, so wait, are you guys actually going to buy a house soon? Um, I think so. Ooh. I don't it know. Depends. We'll it depends. It fucking depends, no man. Don't stress me out right now, dude. I'm just excited. Um, tell him what you did when you saw Seth Meyers at this party. Oh, it was so embarrassing. So you know how Stevie, when, okay, years ago when we were at Milk, um, what's his name was there? Um, Milk the... Uh, no, the Milk, the, there, was a, there was a ice cream place called oh, Milk. Oh, yeah, the restaurant. Right, in L.A. And he saw what's that chubby kid with the glasses that was in uh, Andy Monakis? No, that he was in uh, um, that Judd Apatow movie. Um, uh, Jonah, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Mm-hmm. Oh, so we're at <laughs> <laughs> chubby. <laughs> that, who's that chubby kid? I don't know. Oscar nominated Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah, but at the time. <laughs> yeah, he was fat. Chubby yeah, yeah, kid. yeah. <laughs> so he saw Jonah Hill, and my brother was. We were talking to. I mean, we were talking and hanging out, mm. and then when Jonah went to the bathroom, I go, "That guy's Jonah Hill. You know that, right?" And my, when Jonah came back, my brother bowed. What? Out of nervous. Yeah, he bowed and he did a thing. He did like a triangle thing. Illuminati? <laughs> yeah, like Illuminati thing. And he, and he did that like because he was so nervous. What the fuck? Right? So when so Seth Myers was at that party Friday night. Tell me what you did. Dude. And he grew, he shook his, he took Here. his, hey, Bobby, Here. right? And I took his hand and I did this. You blessed his hand. Yeah, like he's the fucking Pope. How did he react? Nothing. He just kind of pulled away and laughed and then. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, why did I do that? That's a sign of reverence, though, in the in the Philippines. It's a monopole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like I needed to do that, but I don't know why I did that, and I've been thinking about it ever since. I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> Just shake yeah. the man's hand. I know, but it, I, I, I'm afraid of what I'm going to do if I ever met Barack Obama. What oh. would you do? He Hi, goes, oh. hello, and I get on my hands and knees, and I open my mouth. Uh, <laughs> Bobby, you're going to get up. <laughs> yeah. uh. I would literally suck his dick. No, you wouldn't. 
Barack Obama? Oh, he would. So would you, Gilbert. Barack Obama? Yeah, dude. What, you wouldn't? No, uh, I would see, not. George second. would. I would. I would not second. Leader of the free world? What are you, you wouldn't? What are you talking yeah, yeah. about? I eat Michelle would Obama's you? clitoris. Would you suck Barack Obama's dick? No. Ch- oh, really, Oh, Jason? what a coward. Come on. Yeah. It's cowardice. You're a real Pure coward. cowardice. Uh, <laughs> you would, George? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're a real man, George. But uh, <laughs> you said it. I ran into no confidence. I, I ran into. I feel a, like you're a real man, George. <laughs> As if I, before finally, this, I didn't finally. think you were. <laughs> I ran into somebody the other day that I really respect, and he said, "I'm not gonna say his name, but he says he met a girl, and we we're talking about. He's like he's in love and stuff, and then we were talking about it, and he goes, um, I go, are you in love? He's like, I'm in love, and then he goes, I go, how old is she? Because he's fifty. He goes, he's she's twenty. I go, oh, wow. Fresh. I, that is fresh, fresh right? Mm-hmm. Fresh brothers. I go, you want to date him or date her? I like be serious. I think he's here. Hold on. Not this friend, though. No. No. We're talking about. He's running 15 minutes. It's a, he's running 15 minutes late. Perfect. Okay, good. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> you, don't, okay, buddy. you don't have to come. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay, man. It's okay, buddy. You don't have to you show, have to show up. up. <laughs> So he goes, uh, I go, are you going to have babies? He goes, she can't have one. I go, oh, what accident? What happened? She was born that way? No, she, he goes, no, she has a penis. Because he had showed me a photo of her before. And she was hot. Mm-hmm. Like, stunning. Like a body, her body and her face. And I, I, I'll be honest with you. I got a little, a little aroused a little bit. Mm. I feel like that's your dream situation. A hot chick with a dick. I feel like I'm kind of close because I have like a jawline of a man. So mm. I have dudish androgynous features and I have a flat chest. Yeah. Remember when I had big breasts, you were like, oh, you, you need to take those out. You have a huge clit too, so maybe. I have a, <laughs> I have a, a very huge, dick. It's like a little dick. Bulging clit. I have a very clit. small <laughs> I'm kidding. Clit. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I have, I have notice, a little dick. Do you I notice when I see you eating your pussy, I, I suck it like a dick? <laughs> a full, a full, full hand? With the full head, like, you know I put what my... he does. It's like, why is he going up and down? I do 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 that, don't I? I actually yeah, read yeah. in a book. You're supposed to do that. You're yeah, supposed that's to what, treat that's the what I read too, like, right, Gilbert? Yeah, that's absolutely. what I read too, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to act like you're sucking a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so all those young guys out there do that. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> do that. Yeah. It's just... No, I don't. I'm, I, I, I'm not into that. But what the way he was describing it, I was just like, if I wasn't with Clyla, and this person was super. Like we hit it off, and I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I would I wouldn't do it before if I knew. Like, if the first line is "I have a dick," mm-hmm. like like on some sort of like dating app or something, you mm-hmm. know, those messages, right? I'd just be like, yeah. But if I she never said anything, and then I took her on a date, and I really liked her a lot, and we were hanging out for weeks, mm-hmm. and then one day she just says, I, "I have a dick." I don't know. I think that you would be okay with that. My parents wouldn't be. That's what I would think. You of. wouldn't, you wouldn't tell, tell your them. parents, dumb dumb. You don't tell your parents about her clit. You just adopt a kid that's a halfie and then. No, tell if them I go, mom, don't you love Sandy? What? She's good. I like her. And I'd be like, she has a dick. What? What? Like I don't know what would happen. Yeah. I think my dad would die. No. no. <laughs> he would die right then and there. No, I would. I mean, would you date a chick with a dick, George? No. Why? What if you got to know her for like three months? That's what I'm saying. And you really start you to fell fall in love. love with her. Nah, just too weird. What do you mean? And I want to have a family at some point, you know? Yeah, it's but you like can adopt. Yeah, adopting is like the way better option. What if there's days? a technology by then where you can use both your sperms and it's transferred through your butts and you can have a child? Whoa. Whoa. Let's explore that George, for a second. George, answer it now. <clears throat> Still no, but I don't have a good reason, for, a political reason for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about? So you, 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 I, I bet your money it's religious, right? Um, I've got some, still some things from my religious oh, upbringing. Oh, I know, I know you do, bud. You know, my um, I went to Ibiza with a, a three of my a guy friends, and one of my guy friends came home at five in the morning. We all shared an apartment with the hottest, tallest, blondest chick, and I was like, whoa. He never usually pulls girls like this. And he was all excited. And then they walk over to the bathroom. I'm sleeping in the living room couch. They walk over to the bathroom. You know, they turn the lights on. Uh Two minutes later, they turn the lights off. He escorts her back to the door. And and he waves and he says goodbye. And I was like, dude, what happened? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. The next morning, he tells us, he's like, I'm so confused because... 
I was fingering her all night on the dance floor. And then when I went back to the bathroom with her, she had a dick. Oh, and I was like, I think you were fingering her <laughs> asshole the whole time. <laughs> he doesn't know where the asshole's located. Uh, he was very drunk, and he, we were, everyone was Still, on drugs. Still, you're going to feel a dick yeah. on your Number one, forearm. why is it so dry? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, why is it's there poop a on really it? tight p- p- vagina. Yeah. The asshole's are very tight. Yeah. Also, right? why is there large clumps of shit on my finger? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. That's really weird. But beautiful, beautiful chick, though. I'm telling you guys, I was like, whoa, she's hot. I, you know what I would do is I would do I would probably just go, okay, let's see you're the girl. Hey, what's up? No, like we we oh. dated a couple <laughs> weeks, and I don't like the voice. Sorry, I'll change the voice. <laughs> I'll How change, was I? change How a was different I? voice. I hate that voice, yeah. right? And um, we're making out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn it. Just we're making out. Yes, Bobby. They, but you have to stop, right? Okay. And just tell me, tell me that you're a um a guy. Okay, let's make so out. So we're making out. Oh yeah. Oh god. No, do more. Oh, oh god. Hey, fucking Bobby. Oh. Stop! 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 Whoa, 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 whoa! Bobby Lee. Yeah. I have to tell you something. What is it? Don't freak out. I'm not gonna freak out. Just no. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Now look at my tits. I love them. Now look at me. <laughs> Love it. Don't freak out. I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to lower my pants a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Just the, okay. Don't fucking freak out. Okay. You like me, right? My personality? I love everything about you. My soul. I think we're soulmates. Okay, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Yeah, show me. And I'm pulling my pants down and... And I see it. Now I see it. Dick. Right? I went, this is what I'd say. Pull it back up. Okay. Right? Let's make I, out. No, no, no. I'm going to erase everything you said the last 10 seconds and just suck my dick. <laughs> okay wait what yeah and so I'm gonna pretend I never even heard that part I get my dick sucked okay fine I'll do it and I'll tell everyone what? Yeah, I'll tell everyone even if they find out I'll go she never told me I never saw her with a dick she never said anything she just sucked my dick you just said 10 minutes ago that you would definitely date a chick with a dick yeah I think that's how I would do it I think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I would like block it out of my mind interesting would you no you would never do it I'd be like why would you deceive me you're very traditional, though. Yeah, you like want children and do all that. Children yeah. make you. Guys... I'm traditional too, man. I want a fucking lawn. I want to fucking have a baby. Okay, really? To, what take, I... a, to take a <laughs> line. <laughs> Is there cupcakes day. left? Yeah, there are. Yeah. Uh huh. All right, let's stop now. Let's stop, and then right. we'll wait. We'll we're gonna wait back. for James we'll Vanderbilt. We'll, we'll be back, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we have um, our guest is here, and um. It's the one and only James Vanderbeek, everybody. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Yeah, What's going on? baby. <laughs> James. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for my mineral water. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted you on this for, for sure, but I didn't want to intrude, you know, because we work together. Yes. On um, what would Diplo do? Yeah. And I want to start off by, do you remember when we first met? I do. I remember what it very happened? well. Um, all right, so do you want my background yeah, yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. My, everything. Okay, so um, I'd written this character. Yeah. And um, Rick Messina, our casting director, Ooh. sends over a list of people. Yeah. And at the very top is Bobby Lee. Ooh. And I was like... <laughs> wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. He's never stop, heard stop, this before. Stop, stop, I've never heard this before. <laughs> You've never so heard this before? I was... Well, wait, stop, 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 stop. Yes. So um, I, was on, I was on the... Who was number one? You were. Literally top of the list. I was on the road. Wow. I Literally never, top of the list, bro. Before, babe. <laughs> number one. Uh, Dr. Ken was not number one. <laughs> Dr. Ken wasn't even on the list. He wasn't even on the fucking list, Dr. Ken. Wow, this is wow, the that's great. So okay, go ahead, keep going. Uh, I believe he was unavailable. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. 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 No, I'm kidding. Um, you fucking cocksucker. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I was familiar with you. I'd known your work. I don't know that I'd seen much scripted stuff but I googled you yeah yeah and then I saw you on talk shows yeah and I watched you harassing guests oh yeah and touching <laughs> touching <laughs> like local morning hosts in Colorado, yeah, 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 sitting yeah. on laps making like grown men very uncomfortable yeah. and I was like yeah this is our fucking guy yeah yeah, yeah this yeah, is who I sure. want this is who we, we want because for I'm based on what's his name well you're kind of an amalgam yeah but what was his yeah, well, Dip- Diplo's manager is Asian, but not his name again? not all forgot, Asian. Not all name. Asian people are the same. Oh, that's that's true. Bobby Lee. That's true. Thank you. James. He is a wild Asian. <laughs> he is. He's a character. Yeah. Um, but we, I mean, listen. Every everybody in the show kind of started out inspired by somebody. Uh huh. Like um, H. Michael Croner's character was 
he plays the uh, Kroner. Yeah. On the character, mm-hmm. his character was inspired by uh, a German guy who I met at Wes's house, Diplo's house, and then this other dude um, who always wears a suit who's like his kind of tour manager guy. Uh, so uh-huh. like I molded. Same thing with your character, really. Yeah. Um, but. But yeah, so I watched you um, on YouTube. I'm like, this is our guy. This is it. And Brandon Dermer, who directed every episode, yeah. is like my partner in this, um, completely agreed 100%. We're like, yeah, Bobby Lee. It's got to be Bobby Lee. Who else? There's nobody but Bobby Lee. <laughs> yeah. It has to be Bobby Lee. Everybody. I, and then, um, so we made the offer, told Rick Messina, offer to Bobby Lee. Yeah. Damn. And, um, and you passed. Yes, I passed. <laughs> Do you know why? I was told money. <laughs> wow! It, it was maybe the it, was more, it was it was good. It, it was, was maybe the shittiest money TV money you'd ever been. It offered. was fine. What it was is this, okay, James? <laughs> listen yes. to me, okay? Yes. Number one, yes. I know who you are, right? And I was like, oh, him, James Vanderbeek. I that like him. That, right? I, I'm not. I'm not feeling the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, say it again. Oh. Uh, say, say it. Say it. Say the James Vanderbeek. You're my agent. Oh, uh, there's this new Diplo show with James Vanderbeek. <laughs> Bobby, there, okay, there that's, that's, that, that's a little better. Is that better? That's, that's a little better. Yeah. And then they said Brandon Dern. I didn't know who the fuck that was. Right. right. Mm. They go, how much? And and then I go, you know, I just, I got just too much on my plate, which I had really not that much, but I was just like, because of the money, I had to make an excuse, right? <laughs> so I passed. And then what happened was, I get a call from Andrew Santino. He's been on right. the podcast, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. Santino said, um, you got to at least meet him. I go, who? He goes, James and Brandon. I go, all right. He goes, They're, Brandon's really talented. And just meet him. As soon as I met you guys, as soon as I walked in the door, yeah. I was I was going to say yes. That's awesome. Because, yeah. number one, I just liked them. Just the energy. And I didn't know you were going to be there. I thought I was going to just be him. Oh, really? James, uh, oh, I mean, Brandon, funny. right? And then when I saw you there... <laughs> the Messiah. And I wanted to say something there to you. That he is. And I'm not gay. You know that, right? There was a delay. <laughs> there was, there was a autom- yeah, an audible any, delay. A any, large delay. Any, anytime anybody says, you know that, oh, no. right? <laughs> please, please. The right? first question in my head is, yeah, 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 yeah. really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. Okay? I mean, the, I mean. I, but let yes. me just say this, yes. all right? I, I go, he's so, like, in person. You're so handsome. Well, thank you, Bobby. Right? And there was something, you know, here, when white dudes, you don't have this. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have it. You, don't, you, have not, you have nothing to do with this, okay? Poor George. George. You're oh, ugly, God. fugly, no, no, bro. No, no. But, yeah, yeah. But dude, when white dudes smile and they have the little crows, they, their uh, eyes crinkle. Yeah, yeah. They're the good ones. <laughs> oh, there's, 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 there's bad ones. Is that, yeah, is yeah, that Trump a face reading thing? Yeah, Trump, for, yeah. Really? Trump doesn't have it. Interesting. When he smiles, there's no crow because he doesn't ever feet. smile. Mm. It's forced. But he he is so happy, right, <laughs> over his years of being him, yeah. right, that he is genuinely happy. So his eyes crinkle, right. Yeah. And so when he smiles, I go, oh fuck, man, I'm gonna have to fucking do this. Because of that dude right there, you know wow. what I mean? Wow. So it wasn't sex, dude. It you're wasn't. I'm not gonna suck dead. your dick or nothing like that because you're a family man. But my point was, is is that I go. <laughs> I love I love the family part. Is that you're a family, family man, reason dude. I get no <laughs> fellatio. Damn, I missed out. Yeah, but I was just like, this guy right here, dude, is one of the good whites. And you know what? <laughs> this new band. Let me say something. James right Vanderbilt's right? new Let band, the Good Whites. The Good Whites, <laughs> dude. That's right. So I said, that I was a great band name. So good then that is a good band they name. showed me um, that little thing that you guys a short. What yeah. was it? Like yeah. a promotional video. It was, that's how the whole thing started. So yeah, Get di- yeah. That. Um, so Diplo was uh, doing this Mad Decent Block Party tour. And his management had asked Brandon Dermer, this young up and coming brilliant music video director to come up with a concept. And Dermer's concept was, what if James Vanderbeek played Diplo, but like a Dollar Shave Club type vibe? <laughs> and did you know Did you know him at the time? I didn't know Dermer at all. Wow. At so all. He just, uh, just out of his, cause you kind of, uh, same kind of. Same kind of thing came yeah. to me out of the blue with no fucking money. I mean like wow. nothing. Cause they were, they were, it was just like his management was like writing the check to go make the commercial for the thing. Right. Um, but I had heard Diplo on the radio like a couple years earlier talking about how he made music and he's talking mm. about fusing like Latin beats but like mm. reggaeton like all this other stuff. and I was like wow that guy's kind of a genius yeah so I just flagged him as like somebody to watch so when it came in and it was Diplo I was like well I mean shit it's I mean I you know I usually get paid for something like that but 
I'll be associated with Diplo. Like he's, right. like, dude's amazing. Yeah. So um, I met with Brandon, loved him. And I said, you know, are you open to like notes on the script? And he goes, well, I'll just send you the FDX file. Like the final draft file, wow, which is doesn't really ever happen. Like, if, yeah, you know, director who's written something is like, oh yeah, you can just just rewrite it, um, which I did and sent it to him. He's like, yeah, it's great. So we went out and shot it, had a really great time, and then um, and then Viceland came to us and said, we think this is a series. Wow, wow. and that's when I was like, it's not a series. Guys. <laughs> this is yeah, so yeah. not a series. Mm. Like I like. I, I'm, the only reason I took the call with Dermer is because he was so nice. I had such a good experience with him. But yeah. I was like, Brandon, you know, I know you're excited because, you know, you'd get to direct a series. But like, I, I just didn't see. And then that night, I just thought, well, let me give it a chance. So I went to my pool house. I put on some, some Diplo in my headphones. Whoa. I like, had some wine. I was like, wait a minute. This you is have a pool house? Totally a series. <laughs> stop, 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 <laughs> stop, 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 stop. You a fucking pool house? I now there's there's no bathroom in. It. <laughs> yeah, but so basically, what, just let me say something. You have yes. a pool. I have a pool. Okay, yes. you have a swimming pool. Yes. And the swimming pool, there's a house. There's a there's a structure that's separate, right? It's separate. Yes. And you can and you can just relax in there, as long as there's no tiny little Vanderbeek banging on the door. Right. Mm. Oh wow. Yes. So you have some wine. You're back there. You're listening to some there. Diplo. All the tiny Vanderbeeks were asleep. Wow. And uh, yeah. And so I, that was like, this is this. Yeah. And I mean, I've said this a lot, but it's like, this is EDM. Jesus sucks at life. Yeah. And I thought this would be a really cool way to examine like the truth about life, especially because it's for vice. It's for vice land. Mm -hmm. Their whole thing is kind of truth. And by the way, fuck you. Like, I think that's their actual yeah. slogan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I thought this would be a really cool way to like find the truth through the eyes of a clown. Yeah, because Diplo is really—he's very like childlike, and there's a kind of cool like charm to him, and he's a DJ at the end of the day. So like, you can't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. So I was like, let's you know do this, write it, find the truth, and then just layer stupidity on top of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the that was mind the you, I show. had never heard of Diplo. Oh, really? Ever? I number one, when I when I got the call, I go, "What the fuck is a Diplo?" Really? Right? <laughs> and number two, this is funny. One time we were shooting. And I don't know if you did this. You go, hey, man, chick, come over here. So you, you put me in a room. Yeah. And you put on, like, a Diplo song. Uh-huh. Check this. He made this for us. You know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. And I didn't know what the fuck it was. Because you just don't listen to I just to don't EDM. listen to that kind of music. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I wish I had that same kind of enthusiasm that you did. Right. I'm sorry that I don't bring that to the table, my friend. All good. That's you bring you bring okay, quite good. enough. All right, good, good, good. Bring so quite enough. Quite enough. enough. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, now I know who he is. Yes. And who Ioko is and all that stuff. Ioko. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I love it. Are we talking about Aoki? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Aoki. Um, so you're in there and then you you're in the pool house and then with the next thing you call and go, let's do it. Yeah. I called and I was like, I, I know how to do this. I think I know how to do this. Um, and I pitched it out and I was like, if you let me write it and run it, I'll star in it. Wow. And we can go like pitch it to vice. Wow. And so I totally leveraged like my, <laughs> my involvement to, to get my first show running gig. That's what it is. Yeah. That's, that's what that's it was. That's great. It's so funny because you and Brendan, that's how you say Brandon. Brandon. I call him Brendan. <laughs> Well, what's that? He's, he's too polite. He's too Midwest to tell you. But has, has, he, oh my God. has he ever said that I'm saying his name wrong? I think you always called him Brandon on set. I think I never you called him Brandon when the show first this yeah. started and the beginning of the I podcast. I think the Brandon thing changed. is a recent development. But he said something? <laughs> no. He's think, never said anything. I think you've always called him Brandon. Okay, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, thank God. Yeah. There was this guy named um, Jim mm -hmm. on Matt TV. And I called him Andy for four years. <laughs> no, I called him Andy for four years every fucking day. Must Andy! Have, you know, he never said anything. He must have been from the Midwest, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Too and shy. then four years later, we were at a party. He goes, you know, that's not my name, right? I go, what the fuck? Four years, you didn't tell me? Yeah, I worked with somebody for five and a half years and called him. He, like, season one, he had a name on a coffee cup that wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I called him that name for five Von fucking Dawson's? years. Yeah, somebody yeah. was like... Yo, that's that's not his name. <laughs> I was like, what? I thought of that for five fucking years. And he never said anything. He never said anything. Wow. Why don't they say something? I think he maybe he was just confused. Oh, right. But I was calling him somebody else's name who was on the crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But else it wasn't like a proper name. I forget what it was. Yeah. It, was, it said it was kind of a nickname. So. Oh, I see. But yeah. still. And then he did he say something eventually or no? 
Um, he, or somebody he, else said. He never said anything. Somebody uh. else said something. So then I finally started calling him. And then like I realized the reactions I got from him were like, oh, he was also an tenor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably for like four years, you thought he was a dick, probably. <laughs> he probably yeah. thought I was a so <laughs> yeah. asshole. So then you had, you had a meeting with Spike Jones, right, in New York? Yeah. So that was, so th- yeah. So they were like, so we were waiting for the offer, whatever. I'd met with Nick Weidenfeld, whose idea it was to make it a series. And then um, I was like, well, where's the offer? They're like, well, Spike has a few questions. I'm like, what the fuck does Spike TV have to do with this? I thought it was Viceland. They're like, no, yeah, yeah. Spike Jones. I'm Whoa. like, wait, Spike motherfucking Jones? Yeah. They're like, yeah, he has some questions. You're going to send him by email. I'm like, no. I'll fly into New York to meet with Spike Jones. I love Spike Jones. Yeah. Um, so Brandon and I both flew ourselves out on our own dime. Oh my God. And then went in and pitched for like two and a half hours. So about a quarter of the way through the meeting, Spike was like, great. I love it. So, <laughs> do we, so what do we need? A, do we need a showrunner? Is that what we need? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, nope, I'm going to do it. And he goes, great. <laughs> oh, wow. And then wow. I spent the next three quarters of the meeting convincing him that I was the only guy who could run the show. And so I'd already, I'd had episodes written. I didn't tell him that. Yeah. Um, I had the world beat out. I had the characters pretty much dialed in and just, and the tone specifically. Like I just figured for the money we had, we weren't going to get a better showrunner really. Yeah. Like to, to kind of like go out and try to grab somebody and get them excited about Diplo and excited about the world. Mm-hmm. Like it was just something that kind of came through me and just all that momentum. That yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. and I'd been writing for a while. So um, I think it'd been ghostwriting for myself for a lot. So I just thought, you know what? Fuck it, man. Like, let's let's just try it. Yeah, and also it's like, here's you wanna you wanna get into that world of being a showrunner and a producer and whatnot. And this it yeah. fell in your lap. Yeah, and I feel like you're a good dude, and it happens for people that are good. You know, you well, just thank you, things man. just happen. Did you, work did you out. Have to study Diplo and study the world of EDM. Like, yeah, study, yeah, yeah, for sure. What's EDM? Electronic dance. Electronic dance. Is that music. what that EDM? I thought EDM was a fucking DJ. I sort of fucking. Oh I got one of my EDM with Anoko. Yeah, with Anoko. <laughs> with you know what I mean? I saw Anoko at in Atlanta. I've told this story before. Uh huh. And I <laughs> tell it again, what? please. I was in a hotel yeah. and Anoko. What is it? Aoki. 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 Whatever. Um. He goes, "What's up?" To me. Mm-hmm. And I saw, I knew, I vaguely knew who he was. Mm. He picked me up like I was a little baby. And he's a skinny, is he Japanese? Yeah. Yeah, he's Japanese. He's half though, right? Yes. He's, yeah, yeah, there's some white in yeah. there too. Yeah, yeah. And he picked me up like a little baby. And then, you know, we took a photo and stuff. But he was very nice. But I don't know anything about him. No, that's not the story. What was the story? <laughs> the story was you were so kind of happy you were starstruck a little bit because you pretend you don't know his name but you know exactly who Steve Aoki yeah. is and so you saw him at the airport I didn't see him at the airport I saw him at the hotel or the picture was that, at the that's hotel the part yes. of, that's the part of the story you're gonna okay listen I, let's stop okay. I know, right? that's, that's the part I lie a lot yeah for, I'm, I lie a lot I make up things alright so let's let's go back let's go let's get to the truth of the story the truth of the story is this he then took the photograph and wanted to bring Bragged to me about meeting Steve Aoki. Stop! Stop! That's where that's where it is. That's, that's where what the it story is. Happened. Number one, I I've, I was right. I mm-hmm. vaguely knew who he was, but I knew who he was. Mm-hmm. Okay, I saw him at the thing. I did at first. It wasn't like, oh, there's Steve Aoki. Mm-hmm. All right. So then, when he goes, it's Steve Aoki, and I and I go that I knew that she in her Vegas days would go and see her shows. <laughs> yeah, and like. Ch- fucking rubber fucking little fucking clit <laughs> while watching his shows because she had a little crush crush, right? But did you meet him in an airport or a hotel? <laughs> That's the main... In a fucking hotel, uh, I, James. I haven't heard a word you've said since then. <laughs> it's just been bugging me. Yeah, it was in a hotel. You okay. guys okay. then exchange numbers. We do with exchange numbers, yeah. And, and then we, what happened? I don't remember. What was it? What happened was you were trying to brag to me that you had just met Steve Aoki. Yeah. And then you, instead of sending me the text, <laughs> oh, that's the right. taunting text, oh, you sent it to, to Steve, Steve Aoki. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Yeah, I remember now. I remember yes. Now. I remember now. I remember and then now. you had to apologize <laughs> and say, oh my God. Yeah, I was bragging to, <laughs> I was bragging to my girlfriend. That I met Steve Aoki this year and all that That's stuff, but I sent it to him. That's fucking right? awesome. Right, and then I had to go. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was for my girlfriend. I remember that. That was so embarrassing. I blocked it out, babe. <laughs> That's all. You know, his, you know, his dad found it, Benihana, right? What? What? Mm-hmm. That's, That's his favorite place on earth. 
So now you're even more embarrassed. Do you like Benihana? I did until I realized that everything tasted like ginger. <laughs> it's <laughs> it kind of true. Like, every, like ginger. Like the lobster tastes the same as the chicken in the steak. at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like they, it's, it's, all, all, yeah. it's all just ginger. But or maybe I went to maybe they maybe the one I went to in Encino wasn't exactly the highest quality. <laughs> well, Encino, it's a really yeah. good one though. Encino, is it? Is yeah, it a good very one? good one. Yeah. Maybe I just maybe them. I had an, a bad chef. So yeah. the show it critical. Yeah, like dude. I saw Variety had a good review. L.A. Times, New York Times. Yeah, man, I was shocked because it was I was so all in on it, and it was, it's a lot. It's the first time I've done a lot of these things, and so, you know, you, like the whole process was like inspiration enthusiasm is going to work oh my god this is going to be great and then well is this going to and then all of a sudden you're like is any of this going to work oh my god like I had that process in the writing yeah. I had the process in the edit the shoot on the set I fucking love that, that was, was like that was so much fun with you guys um, but you know, you know what also I felt like I didn't feel the kind of stress that I normally feel that I was could, the happiest yeah. I'd ever seen yeah, you on I set I felt like I, I can't wait like right now on this show that I'm doing now, I just it's it's I I'm consumed with anxiety. Yeah, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. It doesn't. F maybe that'll come when I know that it's mm. gonna work. But it's like there's a sense of anxiety that I don't like. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know, but with, with Diplo though, it was like I can't wait to go because I like seeing everyone, and it's also. That there was the kind of pressure wasn't there. I could just have fun, yeah, and and create things with them, and just ad lib. Like here on this thing I'm doing now, I can't ad lib. I, they, I had to read what they wrote. Did you guys improvise a lot? Yeah. Those, yeah. Oh, cool. And, and, and could, but they gave that they gave us permission in a sense. They never said it really, but you could feel that mm. you know that was allowed or whatever. And you guys are great at it too. And that was one of the things I really wanted to do is like write the scenes and structure the scenes in a way so that when we hired people who could improv they, they would come in and like there was something there was something to chew on yeah and so you know maybe we just cast it right you did but we did for sure with h michael i mean he's a groundling he's guy he's so fucking so funny. Funny. he's my favorite he's my I call, favorite yeah he, he's, i call him my scene saver yeah yeah. he comes in he will elevate anything yeah I write he's for so him. good like come up with a better joke and you're like yes and that was the fun part was like because I always feel like jokes that I write are like placeholders anyway. So when people come in and they do something better, to be in a position where you can be like, yes, that's it, we're going with that, as yeah. opposed to as an actor being on a set and somebody comes in with a great improv and you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then somebody else is like, well, I don't know, mm. can we just do it the other way to make sure we have it? Yeah. And you're like, oh. And you could feel yeah. the enthusiasm go, Ooh. And I could tell when you came into that room, into the writer's room to meet us, Yeah. I could tell you were like traumatized by some sets that you'd been on. Yeah. <laughs> about like having to do it exactly the way it's supposed oh, to be yeah. and like the pressure and you're not doing it and directors not knowing how to talk to you or like yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt like I, when I saw my impression when I saw you was like I wonder if this guy meaning you has been like appreciated to the degree that you should be on a set and that's why I was really excited to create an environment where you know with Brandon of course because Brandon <sighs> directs it but um where the, where the two of us could like create a place yeah. where where you guys could run free and yeah. be, be like like best idea wins and like everybody feel comfortable and happy it's and like, like that's what it's supposed to be man you yeah. get better shit that way yeah it's, you know I, I've, been <laughs> I've been traumatized for so long that like when I walked in there I was like you know it's like you know, it's a rape victim. Oh, oh my God. God no, wow. it's not like that. Yeah, what? Yeah. Wow. It's spiritually, you, okay, no, I was spiritually on. raped. Spiritually. Oh my God. So I'm spiritually raped, right? This from the guy who he, showed me his penis, our first scene we acted in. Wait, you, so you see his penis? Yeah, it's called Korean Hello. Oh, wow. All right, and that, let me say something right now. I, I, I'll i never see his, so I have to show him mine. <laughs> that's how, that's that's how, that's how, how it works. works. That's how life okay. works. That's Delicate balance. That's, uh, yeah, I wanted right. to ask you, though. Oh, no, man. How old were you when you got Dawson's? 20. And that was your first big job or no? I had been auditioning for five years by that point. 62, you were 16, I was 15. 15 when I started. I, yeah, it took me a year and a half to get anything. I'd been working in theater in New York when I was 16. So like 16 to 20, I'd done like a bunch of theater. I'd done um, a couple movies. And then, yeah, and then I got that at 20. So that, I mean, obviously that's a life changer. Yeah, that changed everything instantaneously. Was, when did you meet your wife? Which one? 
you were married twice. Yeah, I was married once before this. Yeah. Uh, the four kids that you have now are they with are, the are with my are with current the, wife, the current Mrs. Vanderbeek. Oh Ooh. wow! No. Ooh. No, so when She's the first one, who did you marry the first time? Um, I married a great girl. That and <laughs> no, she's yeah, great. She's great. She's great. What did it work out then? It just, it just, we did, didn't. Some things just don't you know, work out. All right. I was young. She was young, and yeah. like you kind of was she an actress? And, yeah. Famous. I don't want to know what it is, but no. is she famous. Okay. I mean, not famous. She's good. Really good. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Um, really good. And then, um, but yeah, it just didn't work as a marriage. We were best friends, and we were like this. And then it was like, oh wait. This. By the time we finally realized, like, wait a minute, maybe this mm. doesn't have to be a marriage. It was like. Oh wow, we could be friends now. Thank God. Oh, we don't wow. have to like. So it was. It was. Um, was it in your twenties? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, Did you? I feel like that's the natural. I don't want to ask a question. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. But because you know, <laughs> you want just listen, hear me out. All right. Yes. You're on Dawson's Creek. You're married, right? But did you ever go on a pussy frenzy? <laughs> no. You seem like a guy that wouldn't go on a pussy frenzy. I, I just no, not really. I mean, listen, when I was single. <laughs> Like yeah, that's what I'm 30. saying. I, Between your marriages, did you go on a fucking frenzy? I, I mean, not a, I wouldn't call it a frenzy. It's a no. frenzy. Well, can you explain what a frenzy no. looks like? He went Is on it... a jog. Crystalia. Uh, <laughs> he goes on, oh Polly Shore, they go on frenzy. Frenzy. So multiple in one day. Sometimes three in one day. Jeez. Sometimes. Okay. Oh, my no, goodness. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jesus Jesus you don't seem like somebody that would go on no. a pussy frenzy, but yeah. I need to ask you because here's what it is you're good looking, you're famous. You're a talented guy. And I was, because here's what it is. Yeah. Here's what it is. This dude, mm -hmm. right, has every ability to go on the the most massive <laughs> pussy frenzy yeah. that you'll never get, my friend. <laughs> you lipless fuck, you'll never get it. Oh and God. you pink fuck, you'll never get it either. You don't have the eyes for it. <laughs> this guy right here, right? He has the opportunity. And it's like this. It's like Wolverine not using his claws ever. Oh, restraint. Yeah. Wow. He was restraintful. But I don't, is, that is, that a, is that a word? Okay. So you never went on a pussy front thing. No, no. I, but I don't know that that makes me a good person. It so does. I, it does. I just, it's kind of the way I'm built. But especially what? by the time I was like, by the time I was single, I was like a fully domesticated male. Like I was a shitty dater because all I knew how to do was be married. So I'd be like, mm. so how was your day? You know, <laughs> like yeah, I didn't know yeah, how to. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I knew how to be married to somebody. I didn't know this how to thing, like. Let me that's stand. I need to stand for a second. Keep bringing the mic up. I, I need. This guy's the exact opposite. I'm the opposite. I just, I stand. He when doesn't I have know to make a point. how. Okay. What I'm right. saying is, is right. this though, right? Yes. Is is that you were? It's in your upbringing. You were born that way. You're not. So do you get credit for it if you were born that way? No, that's no. Like, I'm just like, saying yeah. that it's like you come from the good whites. Right. <laughs> you come from the stop, band. Stop, stop. The band. Like, good like stock. You, there was a lot of them. Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> James <laughs> yeah. So James Abraham Lincoln. He <laughs> never went on a pussy frenzy, right? Well, I, I don't know. I, I never know. I never know him. But that, my point is, who Andrew, else is something like Andrew him? Hamilton? What? Basically, all the founding fathers. By the way, yeah, Hamilton, yeah, 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 yeah. Hamilton went on a pussy frenzy. Yeah, oh, he Hamilton did. He did. Yeah. He did the, the yeah, Hamilton. Shut the fuck up. You don't know right, the history. Right. I just watched right. the musical. But, it, but if you know the musical, you know that that George Washington's wife named her feral tomcat after Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> oh yeah, wow. that was a joke. Oh wow, wow. Yeah. There was fucking going on between them. Do you think? Huh? Did they fuck or whatever? Yes. It's true. Yeah. yeah, all the time. They really? Yeah. That's really weird. Serial, See, my point is that you're serial. No, but Lincoln she, didn't, though, she right? She his wife. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I saw the movie. He had Marfan syndrome. I, saw, I don't think saw he Daniel saw, Day, Kim. I saw Daniel Day. Kim. Or Daniel Day Kim. Oh, dude, dude, <laughs> dude Wait, Daniel Day Kim as play, Abraham Lincoln. He could do it if he wants. We were going to make that movie. He could <laughs> do it if he wants. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> And then I could play like uh, his son. Yeah, I could play a son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, yeah. Long, as long as you could ad lib. Yeah. yeah. So you, so you, you got you married, and then you in your thirties you were single, and then you yeah. met your wife. Yeah. How'd you meet her? I was uh, in Israel. I was on a trip in Israel. She's from Washington State. I'm from Connecticut. We were both on a like an organized See, that's, trip. That's what I thought she, you married a Jew. Is she Jewish? She we you know we did the twenty three and me. She's actually. Point four percent. Well, that's so am I though. So Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Point. So you so met her in Israel. How? Did, uh, yeah. So, so I had been, so I'd been married, I'd been single, and I reached a point in my singledom where I was like, I'm fucking done. Like mm -hmm. I'm 
done with the texts at four in the morning. Like I want to meet somebody. I want a relationship. I want a life. I want a family. And I was having this realization as I was on the plane and I was in Israel like the first day of the trip and we were in Jaffa, which overlooks Tel Aviv, like I've right been, by the water. I've been there, bud. Right? <laughs> Jaffa. I love it. Jaffa. Um, and so I was telling a friend of mine because he was like walking ahead of the group. So like ran up and like, hey, dude, I had this revelation. Like I want a woman, somebody I can like, grow with, somebody I can build a life with. And in the middle of telling him this, somebody like wanted to ask him a question. Like, excuse me, I have a question. I'm like, who the fuck is interrupting me in the middle of me telling that I want to meet my soul? Oh shit, she's hot. It was my, it was my wife. Oh, wow. Oh my god. Literally interrupted like me in the your, middle of saying your it. life. Is a, <laughs> is a fucking rom com. <laughs> You're lying. That shit happens in the movies. Me cutes. Mm. He's talking about it. Yeah. Excuse me. Right. And then that's the one. I just find that happens in everything in my life. <laughs> if I just talk about it. It falls in my lap. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. You know what? It's what happens in the fucking uh, GWs, man. Yeah, the right. GWs. The GWs. The GWs. The GWs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let me say something. So you met her, and then what happened? And then. Um, Is this too personal? I, I really love I'm really interested. I don't know. In this it's shit. you. I, I, I love it. I, yeah. I want to know. Um. Yeah, so we met, and then it was like super. I mean, if you really want to know, like it was like super intense. We bond on a very deep level. We're like in Israel. We're going to spiritual sites. Did we're know, like, did she know who you were? Yeah, but she didn't watch the show. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's nice. even better. Yeah, Good. yeah. Neither neither better. one of the women I married ever watched Dawson's nice. Creek. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, so we were we just like bonded really deep, really, and then it was the one like this. It was. So it's different. It was different than like most relationships in that we both knew what this could be right away, and so we were like, "Let's not burn out." So we actually actively had to be like, "Okay, we're not going to talk on the phone for four hours a day, every day." We actually like did these like periods of like restriction where we didn't talk for like a week, just because it was like I had shit to figure out. You know what I mean? Like I had to pull my life together. I had to pull my career together. She was on, she was going places. This girl is smart and like in, in that time period. This is in your thirties, yes. right? So we're talking after Dawson's Creek. Yep. It was just you did an CSI kind of a show, right? That was later. That was after you met her. Yeah. So there was a t was there a period where you weren't working? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we all go through that. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. There's periods where I wasn't working. There's periods where it was like, wow, well fuck, what is what, what can I do? There are periods where I did bad. TV movies just to like mm. make a little coin. Yeah. yeah, I mean, which listen, there are a lot of people struggling a lot harder than making, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Than making a shitty Christmas movie up in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. to make to make ends meet. But um, but yeah, when you when you did stuff like that, did it depress you? I at the time, it was kind of my way out of depression. It was almost like therapeutic. Like you know what, and what I learned from those jobs is like if I can't show up to set. And be happy to be on a set, be happy to be earning money, and like be happy to just be adding value yeah. on a movie that I wish nobody will see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, then how am I ever going to be, be able to handle being on a set on, of something that I'm proud of? Because mm -hmm. really, it shouldn't, like, what people think of the end product or how impressed they are with you should matter absolutely not at all when you're mm. on that set. Yeah. And so, I took it as like a real boot camp in just learning to fucking assassinate my own ego and get the fuck over myself and just show up and add you're value. Make, you're, about to, you're about to make me cry. And be happy doing yeah. it. Yeah. Because that's exactly what you need to learn, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Dalai Lama, guys. I know, right? A, G, I mean, a real GW. A real GW over I mean, here. Yeah. You learn, you live, and you learn. But let me say something, man. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, you nailed it on the fucking button there, man. It's like I have to. I need more gratitude in my life, man. That's what it is. Assassinate the ego, Bobby. I have to assassinate the ego, you know, and whatever he said. I'll rewind it and say, okay. uh, yeah, and tape. And just, like write it down to it every yeah, night. To it every night. New life <laughs> mantra. So then you you so she was living in Connecticut or where was she living? Washington. State. Washington. Well, no, State. she was in between Palo Alto and Los Angeles because she was a uh, strategic advisor for a philanthropic billionaire at the time. Oh mm. gosh. Whoa. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, she's like that's smart. Good. Yeah. And um, she, so she, you guys, when did that 
start. We um, we were married <clears throat> a year after meeting. Wow. So you guys yeah, did this whole Israel. practicing a little yeah. bit of restraint where you wouldn't talk for a week. Yeah. And then when you would see each other, it obviously feel like. Totally it was crazy. It was intense like, again. I feel like maybe that's sort of the way to go to kind of. It was bonkers. Yeah. It was like like really building desire. And then like one of the times we did it, it was like the hardest time of my life. But I got so much done. But it was like there was not a minute that went by where I wasn't like, I want to fucking marry this girl. Mm -hmm. wow. like, I, like I, it built so much appreciation. Mm-hmm. And we did it like, you know, very consciously. It wasn't like we had a fight and like, oh, we should take some time off. It was like, listen, let's not be stupid. Yeah. Let's like really. And um, and then we got back together. I mean, we never like not together, but we just like finally like, OK, here's like here's here's where I'm at. It's on. Let's do it. And then we got pregnant right away. Wow. And then got married, and then yeah. And you have four. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we four. It just, is that it? You gonna do more? I don't know. Six. I don't no, know. Don't, well, no, 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 no. No, four is enough. Well, five. Like I don't know. Five. I, is I could what? do five. <laughs> I could do five, but also like. How many boys? How many the, girls? The poor woman needs a break. Yeah. She really. <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know how she does it. I really don't. It's a girl, boy, girl, girl. Girl, mm. so three girls and a boy. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and it's—is it? I mean, because I talked to Sebastian the other day about his baby, <coughs> and it's life-altering. They love it. Well, you love it. Oh yeah. Why? I mean, it's why. Fucking, it's you want, you, convince me why you want kids. I know, but convince me why <laughs> he wants them. He wants kids, but he doesn't want to take care of them. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I literally okay. I literally meant it. I, so I listen. I. I hate talking about kids for people who don't have them because I know, but I because you end I, up like waxing poetic about like how amazing and life changing. Yeah. You don't really know who you are until you have kids. Man. Yeah, and then other people who doesn't people who don't have kids are like fuck you. Yeah, yeah. That's dude. Why. Like my life is good. like I feel like like people. Some people should have kids. Some people shouldn't. I just I've known that I've wanted them for a long time, and I just all right. Here's a story. So good when I when. When my wife gave birth to my daughter, leading up to it, I was like, I knew I wanted it. I wanted to have children with this woman so badly. I was so excited. But then there's also like, all right, I'm gonna have to change a diaper. I'm gonna have to um, you know, get up in the middle of the night. Mm. The second I met my daughter, I went, oh my God, you. Like, you are who I've been missing. Like, I've been... Oh. Like that, no, that, no wonder I had like little moments of depression. Like no wonder I was sad when I was a kid. Like I had to wait 33 years to meet you. It was like I mean, instantaneous. So then all that like I need to shit went away I and it was mean, like, I just wanted to. I mean, that's what it's missing in my life. No, don't just have to fix you. <laughs> they're not there. I lost you. They're, they're, no, you can't just get it. You can't I'm get empty. Up. I ain't gonna meet our baby. <laughs> I gotta meet our, look at it. Oh my God, <laughs> just look at it. This is what he's saying. I will say though also, yeah. on the, literally this morning, I was in the park and I was working out and this guy came up. <laughs> And I, in a park. This, was, that's his life. He lives in a fucking rom com, all right? Dude? <laughs> it's not the life that you leave. I know, live, definitely. Right? This, he is lives only, a, this is only going to sound more rom com until I get to the punchline. Yeah. Um, but I had a football there, and this guy, and this guy <laughs> was walking, was had a baby in a stroller. My Letterman jacket just was wait, on the ground. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was, he had a baby in a stroller, and he was like, hey, do you want to throw? I was like, yeah, dude, let's throw. Mm. So. We have a catch, and I was like, "How old's your baby?" And he's like, four months." And I was like, "Oh wow!" I was like, "You are in it!" I'm like, "Congratulations!" He's like, "Yeah, thanks." And I said, "I got, I got four myself." And he goes, "Wow, that sucks." <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was like, crying, laughing because like, very funny. The, he was so sleep deprived. Yeah, yeah. And I know exactly yeah. where he is, like, because that's what happens. Yeah. And the thought of four kids to this poor man was like no that way. fucking it just came out of his mouth i don't think he meant to say it yeah and it wasn't judgmental i was like wow that fucking sucks <laughs> you gotta deal with four of these little fuckers yeah um and so i actually wrote something on instagram today um that like 
yeah, it there are times like it's fucking sucks sometimes. Like you're woken up constantly. You are constantly worried. Pain you feel more deeply than before. You worry about the world in a way you didn't before. Like um, the environment. Yeah, the environment, the world, yeah. anger. You like I can't watch fucking Game of Thrones. I can't watch people get their heads chopped off yeah. anymore. You never seen Game of Thrones? No, I watched the first episode. I'm like, nope. <laughs> push a kid out the window my wife mm. and I were like okay next so <laughs> don't go to strangers house so. Um, so but I will say I mean I it's so worth it on like a deeper level that you really can't convey to somebody who doesn't have kids mm. no you did that's, that's all I'll say. no you didn't no, no, you, no, you, you actually, actually did you actually did oh, thank you you actually okay. did and um, I get it yeah. Whatever now, you're saying, I get it. Now we live in regret. Now we, we, re- <laughs> we killed. We killed two. We killed two, James. My, we my, aborted two, James. <laughs> well, you know. We killed two. We could have. It's it's legal. Why did I? I, I know. You, I know. But what I'm saying is, is that I should have. <laughs> we killed two. We fucked it up. Our lives could have changed. Oh, bitch! Why'd you make me do that? Well, if you're, not, if you're not ready, you're not <laughs> yeah. ready. You know what I mean? I'm like, re- look you're, at you're me. ready. It had nothing to do with not wanting them. It was circumstantial. It was I circumstan- wasn't well. She wasn't well. God. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I Listen, you get no judgment from me, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I, my goal is to make everybody here feel worse. But <laughs> I just want to make everybody feel shitty no, about no, it. No, I'm ready. I want one. We love it. We love it. Okay. Because I'm getting insight from you, right? So here's what we've learned. This yes. is what we've learned. Um, <laughs> pool James, houses have no bathrooms. His pool houses don't have no mm-hmm. bathrooms. Right. All right. Number two, you you live in a rom com. Mm-hmm. Number three, <laughs> you, things just happen to you. Mm-hmm. The magical things just happen to you. Yeah. You're a dream weaver. I'm a, I'm a right. Dream yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream weaver. Yeah, for sure. And then, um, and this like the show. The show just happened to you. It did, but I mean, yes. No, it did. I was very, very lucky. Um, it was a lot of work. I know, but you know what, I mean, dude? Like, you it know was, what? you know what? It, I'd never seen anything like it. She loved it was it. its oh, own you. show, and I was thank very you. skeptical in the beginning. Yeah, you know, I was definitely happy that Bobby partook because you know, I I knew who Dip, I know who Diplo is. I know everybody. Calvin Harris, you know, in the EDM world. Yeah. <laughs> so I was happy. I was excited for him to be a part of it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. But um, when I watched the show, I was. S- surprised at how because cool and I was really excited it, you can't, I, mean, I told you, can't, you okay you can't because oh, Santino you. said this kid Brendan can make a dollar look like a million dollars yes he can that's the most important fucking thing and his crew is is amazing amazing right so I knew that right you have a great lead nice guy creative guy you have Brandon 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 Dermer mm-hmm. right so I already knew my thing is Who's gonna watch Vice Land? Nothing against Vice. I love Vice. Yeah. I love the company. I love Spike Jones. But I don't even know what channel it is. So right, most people don't. Yeah. So that was if it was on, if it aired on Netflix, right, or you know HBO. Or I felt like Vice Land was a perfect is a perfect home for it though. It is, but I, what we don't, we can't talk about the future of the show. Yeah. Because nothing's etched in stone. But I think something great's gonna happen with it. Right now, you can watch it this week. Yes, That's right. Where for free on Where? Viceland.com. So usually, if you go to Viceland.com or you get the Viceland app through yeah. iTunes, yeah, um, you enter your cable subscription right. information. Yeah. You can watch it. This week, you don't have to have a cable subscription. Mm. So if you're if you're if unplugged, you're listening, you know, what I mean, um, the people that are listening right can, now, you're Tiger Belly fans. You're a Bobby Lee fan. You're now Hopefully a James Vanderbeek. You know, now you're a Vanderbeek fan. <laughs> you have to give it a shot because, you know, the way we continue with our lives is we all want to feel joy. And we all, just hear me out, Gilbert. I don't like your face. <laughs> Sorry. All right, because I'm improvising here. <laughs> I, I got it. All right, so just don't smile when I talk. All right? You flat face fucking jungle. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your face is a desert. It's flat. Got it. Rolling. Yep. Okay. No. You I'm can't not be a jungle and a desert, so choose one. That's true. <laughs> You're a jungle. Thank you. Yeah. Jungle gook, you are. You're you for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love your people, though. Thank you so much. You guys smoke. Thank you. You guys get. You don't even chill. You smoke like this. Squatting. squatting. You squatting. smoke squat. <laughs> <laughs> you cook like that too. It's great. I love fucking platoon. Great movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, you're not wrong. It yeah, was yeah, shot yeah. in the Philippines. It was shot in the Philippines. Yeah. But definitely not, not about When you get older, though, you're that dude that Kevin Dillon shot in the leg and I you're t- hopping <laughs> up and down. I turned Vietnamese. <laughs> Yeah, you're that dude. All okay, right. fine. I'll take it. So oh. anyway, um, don't fucking, but what I'm saying, yeah. I don't even know what I was saying now. You fucked me up. The show brings joy. It brings joy. To, uh, here's, yeah, there we go. Okay, here we go. So, I think um, you need a new screen for your iPad. Right? <laughs> you don't want to. Not everyone was on nine years on Dawson's Creek, okay? <laughs> you fucking bastard. I mean, you're a good wife, but my point is, is this. GW. You're GW for life. But um, my point is, you really are a good dude. I love you so much. But Thank my you, point is, is this, too. is that if you're listening right now and you're a Tiger Belly fan, you're now a Vanderbeek fan, you have to um, support and then we support you and, and vice versa. It's a... To Lane Street. That's true. Mm-hmm. And you can get it on iTunes. If the if the free window on Viceland is not there, you, or Sling. And I have a prediction. I have a prediction that it's going to go either on some sort of like other platform one day. Huh? And you're going to be able to watch it that way. But, um, <laughs> right? It's. I know yeah, you can't man, say anything, but some exciting things are happening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right? It did get great reviews. That was the crazy part. Yeah, that was. Would, that, I, I, had, I had no. I had no idea what to expect. And what I secretly hoped for was like one or two headline reviews, mm. you know, where they can like put above a poster or something. Because mm. I've done a lot of movies in my career and a lot of projects where people have actually liked things despite themselves, but they've gone out of their way to make sure that there's nothing that you can put yeah. above a poster. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. they carefully will mm. write their way to just like weave in and out of like kind of liking it, but not giving us that. And it was like, we got a ton of those on this one. It was crazy. yeah, amazing. I read yeah. them, and it, what I loved about it is, is that I was at a pizza place, uh, right by the comedy store, and I was eating. And across the street, it's just Diplo, and it's just James on the poster. So <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Hey, no, that's cool. I, I, no, I like it. I did not design the poster. I, 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 I'm still a GW. Did I accuse I'm, I'm still a GW. You're very GW. I'm still a GW. I did, did not I accuse design you the poster. Of it. I have a question. Yeah. So in Diplo's real life, when he's performing in Vegas, yeah. when he has a billboard of him, is his manager on that <laughs> yeah. billboard of him? <laughs> She got you dead to rights, bro. First of all, what you guys are misinterpreting what I just said. Oh no, <laughs> no, we're not. No, yeah, you are. We've interpreted it, and, and, and I resent, I resent the accusation. To be honest with you, <laughs> what I said, you can rewind the tape, is, is that I was eating pizza at Little Joe's, mm-hmm. okay, and I was eating it, and I look up and I see a billboard with James with a coffee mug, mm-hmm. right, with his yes. little gray beanie, and it says, "What would Diplo do?" and it says, "Vice Land and whatnot," right, and I felt joy in my heart. He was the only one on the poster. <laughs> Why are you keep adding that little end? <laughs> what? That button. Which is a good thing that he was the only one. <laughs> you know? Dylan Francis is a name too. Mm, that's he's true. great in it. He's great he's in so it. Good he's in it. so yeah. good, isn't he? Yeah. I, he... he won't text me back, but he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> he's a busy dude. He. Uh, oh, fuck it. I we're all my, busy, all right? We're all busy. Um, Dylan... <laughs> Dylan, I didn't know what to expect. Cause Dylan's a DJ. He's as big as Diplo in a lot of circles. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, and he, when we shot, so we did like, uh, like a proof of concept thing after the commercial that we showed to Spike Jones, which is a little more tonally in line with what we wanted to do. Um, so like a, so we just we went to the Mad Decent Block Party, um, and started improving. We threw me on stage, dressed as Wes, dressed as Diplo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but Dylan jumped in and started improving with us. And Dermer was like, you know, we should think of having Dylan. And I'm like, yeah, he's great. Wow. And, then, and I said, but is he like, is that how it worked? Is he really great? And 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 Dermer goes like, well, just te- check out his Snapchat. And I did. And I was like, okay, this guy is super clever. He's so creative. Yeah. And so I wrote this role for him as like this hanger on, yeah, super mm-hmm. low IQ. Because because one thing I know about Dylan is he he's likable and he's charming. Yeah. And I thought he could be charming, like all the way down to like an IQ so low he's barely functioning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I didn't really know what to expect, and he crushed it. Not only crushed it, he is also really just he it he has comedy energy. Yeah, like being around a comic, like yeah, he, he really does. Mm. I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even know who he was. I thought he was from the Groundlings too. Mm. That's he, how. Yeah, that, he, I, honestly, I I, yeah. I I went oh he they got Michael and they probably got this guy from the Groundlings. Yeah, I didn't even know he was a DJ until later. I'm 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 being completely mm. fucking real with you. When we were at the table read and he jumped in on a bit with H. Michael Croner, yeah, and held his own. Yeah, I was like, mm. wow, whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Does um Brandon Derman do crystal meth? 
No. Why does he look like he does? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like a guy who should who should be selling you vans. <laughs> yeah. Does he not look like a sketch? Like if, I'm not kidding you. If you saw him walking down the street, you would like kind of you would check your wallet. No, you wouldn't. He's like a sketchy. Wallet. He's like a. He's sketch. got the kindest eyes. He, he doesn't have your eyes. The crows. He's. He doesn't have. He's too TW. young. He's a baby. He's a cute. He's a cute. He's a cute. He's a. You're right. He's when, a uh, baby. When, when Santino he, was here, you said he looked like he worked at a Circle K. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he did is, you see he how he defended so Brandon unassuming. just now? Mm. This is why he's pure. Mm. Well, this Brent, is no, Brent, no. This, this is, is my brother, man. I know, like, see, that's what I'm saying. You need whites like this. This is this. Is, <laughs> well, no, 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 just, listen, 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 listen. This guy right here is Schindler. Okay. <laughs> the same if he was in Why Germany, smoke, he would smuggle like thirty of them out in his pocket. <laughs> right? He's one of those. He's, he's not. If pockets. he was, he's not what Trump. You know what I mean? Supports. You know, I should, I should get a bunch of guys like me. We should just ch walk down the street chanting "Whites like us." <laughs> Yes, that's yes, what we need. That is what we Good need. whites, good whites. Yeah. <laughs> whites like us. <laughs> whites <laughs> like us. <laughs> whites <laughs> like yeah, yeah. You know, but that, don't get these two in. That wouldn't get, <laughs> yeah. that wouldn't get misinterpreted, would it? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. You, Bobby Lee told me. <laughs> he said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there anything else you want to promote, like a movie or anything? Or um, yeah, I'm a. I, it's been a crazy fucking year, actually. It's been great. Nice. It's been great. I'm in, I, I'm in downsizing the Alexander Payne movie. Wow. Oh. I, we're like one scene, but I, th I, just saw I think the, I'm still in it. I just saw the trailer for that. <laughs> oh, yeah? I love the concept. It's Have, amazing. It's, it's a, about it's people getting movie. shrunk. Downsizing, right? That yeah. one, right? It's Alexander Payne who did Sideways. I know who he and is. And like, okay. He, he does, he's married the, the chink from the uh, Crazy Anatomy. <laughs> God. <laughs> Sandra, 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 my Sandra, friend, my Sandra, friend Sandra. 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 I did Arliss. That was my first acting job. Oh, really? Yeah, Sandra was so nice to me. I love Sandra. Yeah. I ran into them once at the, at a fair, and yeah. they were really kind. I'm sorry for calling you chink. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. But I think as an Asian, it's like calling you, you know, like if I was black. Mm. Yeah, nope. Nah, nope. Nah, no, I'm not going to nah, do it. I'm not going to nah, do it. Nah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it because I'm going to Look at the ink. time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So my point is, is this, is that, so you're in downsizing. <laughs> With Alexander Payne. Yes. For like, yeah. But I think the movie's going to be great. I'm, it I'm looks it amazing. For two seconds, but um, I'm but playing. Are, dude, it, it, I, it, I, that's been my career. I always do like one scene in a movie. Yeah. I love it. It's no pressure. It's fun. Interesting. I find it hard to do sometimes. Really? Well, but I also. Were you nervous? Again, this is the, you're going to fucking hit me after this. I started playing leads. So like my, mm -hmm. how I learned to act was have a character, start in one place, end in another place, and have like every day on the shooting schedule to like just right. tweak in little kind of tiny things. Yeah. So when I started doing more like character stuff, which I love, like all the actors I love growing up were like character, more character actors. Right. Um, I, I realized, oh wait, you gotta make really specific choices and you gotta come in and bring it. And you gotta step into an environment where you're not familiar with it every day. Like as a, when you're, you know, like, you're playing a leading man you you can get in a rhythm you yeah. can like warm up a little bit you yeah. can like you know have a scene like ah oh, it didn't go oh now I found my stride but if you come in for one day you gotta fucking you gotta nail it I know that's it's 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 people don't know it's stressful yeah and you don't know like if the producer is cool if the director mm. is competent yeah, you gotta make yeah, a yeah. lot of decisions yeah really quickly Were I have you, a lot of respect for for anybody who can come in and do that were you nervous I'm always a little bit nervous for like First day before, like I'm going to go do an episode of Modern Family next week. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Eric Stone, so, Eric um, Stone Street. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Eric's done our show. Yeah, then, I love yeah. Eric. I've known Eric. Eric. I've known Eric for years. He's great. He's I've known him for way before that show. Um, so I know, and I know Eric. I know Jesse, who I'm working with. Yeah. I know all the writers. I know the producers. I know everybody on there. But there was a moment today when I was like, I was working because I have to learn an accent for it. I was like. I'm a little nervous yeah. for, for this table read. Like I'll be sitting down. <laughs> oh. It'd be everybody with all their like multiple Emmys and like a closet somewhere. Uh, mm, the table read. When's the table read? Wednesday. Wow. I Wednesday. shoot Wednesday on my show for the fir the fir first episode. Oh really? And I'm really nervous. Yeah, it, it's it's good nervous though, right? Little butterflies. I don't know what it like... is. I, it's, it's just nervous. Yeah. I don't know the difference. <laughs> it's just there's I, you stress and then there's bad stress. The you stress is good. Is mine bad stress? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, definitely. What, like, what is definitely. my stress like? Your stress is, um, it almost morphs into like a tenter, temper tantrum, and then it morphs into like a spiraling and then a deep depression, and then suicidal tendencies. Yeah, that's how I live. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly. How I, I literally like. I literally don't know how to function. I like. I I I lay there and I go. You know and I mean? then he starts getting all these random boils on his face. <laughs> oh my god! Like the day before he has to go on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah It's yeah, yeah. always like, okay, if he has yeah, like to I'll work Wednesday growth. tomorrow, the boils will come out. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of unknowns when you're just stepping on a set. That's exactly. I like there defense. There are so many unknowns. <laughs> I like that. That's Schindler right there again. Yeah. So many unknowns. Yeah. Are they, with hair and makeup, wardrobe. Yeah. Everybody, the cast. Are they right. going to be weird? Are they, can you improv? Yeah. Can you come in with ideas? Are they? to be cool with it one time a guy said to me a director and he whispered this in my ear he goes hey it's pretty good um after a take yeah i don't understand a word you're saying right now <laughs> like none of the things you're saying you're so i was so nervous when i was yeah, talking mumbling. like i was mumbling it mm, you know yeah. because it was my first take and i hate that and then you gotta and then you go oh my god they don't even they don't even think i speak english <laughs> Why do we Making hire him? a foreigner? <laughs> oh my! The worst, you know. I like offers. Yeah, but that in a, in many ways, I'd rather audition because they know what you're gonna do. I was offered. So the first comedy I ever did was a failed um, sitcom pilot. Yeah, and it was, and I was actually cast really well, and I had to read for it. People were like, "What is he funny?" I don't know. And I went in. I was really well cast. It was really well written. And it worked, and people were like, "Wow, he's funny!" And like, it was the show did not get picked up. But based on the strength of that, I was offered another sitcom the year after, uh -huh. no audition, and I was completely miscast in it. Mm. And I was not funny, and I was not mm -hmm. the guy you should have hired for it. Mm -hmm. And it was a really painful experience, like every day, like getting up and just tanking and then what happened was yeah what oh. happened was wow. so like they were the first opening lines the director who i love was it a live show? it was a three camera yeah yeah multi-camera oh live so they, you didn't get far you actually shot it we actually i i was convinced after the table read like i sat down at the table read and i was, I was expecting everybody to be like oh yeah he was so fun that time i like you, you read people's energy like yeah. you sit down at the table and everybody was like let me see it Oh, oh, God. Because I, the you know, the network, whoever had kind of talked them into hiring me, and so after the table read, I did not get any laughs, and they were like, "Okay, you guys just hang out for a while," and we were oh. waiting for an hour. I'm like, "I'm gonna get fucking fired. They're gonna fire my ass after the table read," and they didn't. But I got a lot of like, just more energy, you know, just try. <laughs> And and like being hammered on these first two lines of the sitcom. So I'm like, the sitcom is, uh, I'm at a beer. I'm at a beer. I'm in a bar um, drinking a beer. And um, there's a TV on. And it's Tom Selleck is on the television. Right. Right. And he's talking about having, he's a, a disgraced senator who had this affair with somebody. And it's, you know, very funny. So he's talking. And, and then, you know, I have, and then they cut to me and I have my like, but I'm bump comment line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not what I do. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just not. I don't do that well. There are people who can do it, and I marvel at them. Yeah, it's yeah not yeah. me. Yeah. Um. And so I had like I they'd been hammering him in these lines so hard. I had no like bearings on what was funny and what wasn't. Mm. And so we're <laughs> we're at the bar. I give my Tom is you know reading his like crazy laughter, bringing the house down. Yeah. Cut to me. I give my line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing. It, from an audience. Nothing. Oh my god. Nothing. Not even. Oh my god. So, so I'm nervous like, right now. So like flop, so flop sweat immediately. Second line comes in. I'm like, all right, maybe just more energy. That's the key. Right? <laughs> the best acting notes. Just more really energy. hit it harder. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I have no instincts at this time. I'm I'm completely. How old blind. are you at the time? Probably I'm, 19. No. At this at this point, I'm. Tw I was like 27, 28. Mm. Right. Probably. After Dawson's. Yeah. It was after. Wow. So um. So I, so that's a, I really give it the old energy. Yeah, <laughs> scream. Yeah. Um, even less sound this this time. Just, oh I mean, not God. even the writer doing the obligatory ha. You know where they like laugh at their own jokes to yeah. tell you that though no, you, yeah. you like nothing. And I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? What the fuck? And then um, Jane Krakowski was in this with me. Oh. Jane comes in. And she starts bringing the house down. We go to this downstage table. They're loving Jane. Somebody else comes in. They're loving her. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, the show is 
good. They love Tom. They love Jane. They love everybody else. Um, and so, What's, what are you thinking at the? This I'm time? thinking they're going to write better lines for me. They're going to write something else for me. Yeah. I sit. No, none of the writers are looking at me. Ugh. No, I don't see like the pitch circle happening on the floor where they like come up with better jokes. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck is going on? And and I'm waiting and waiting, waiting. Nobody comes up to give me another line. And then they go, all right, back to one. And I'm like, you can't make me do this again. Like, you can't make me tank with these lines again. And I'm like getting really fucking freaked out. And I'm starting to go out of body, like the point where it's a traumatic experience. Where I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be absent right now and just somehow get through this. And they're like, okay, speeding. And Jay Harrington, who was, who was in this, it was sitting next to me at the bar, goes, um, oh, did you hear? I said, what? He goes, our mics were off at the top of that. The audience couldn't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god i practically collapsed wow like just the audience could not hear a word i'd said Stop. and i was like oh <laughs> thank god my oh goodness. man so then so then i get to say these lines again and i got polite laughter from the audience mm, lukewarm but lukewarm yeah um and the show did not get picked up but um but you didn't get fired i didn't well i, I don't feel like you've ever been fired i didn't get hired have i ever been fired I've been cut out of things. Me too. Out of movies. Yeah, me too. And like for very good reasons, but um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever been. F- f- There's no, you know why? You're too likable, man. You're too likable, brother. Or too expensive, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy what he just said. Yeah. Because if it was me, I would I would have had the same I, I don't know what I would I mean because I get boils as it is if I do a commercial <laughs> right so it's like I don't know what I would have done it you was I mean? bad I remember one time during, during the rehearsal period of that I was like because my character like worked for the CIA or something important and I was like you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna like imagine I'm in a suit like the whole rehearsal so I just like imagined like I was in the suit and I walked around as if I was wearing a suit and the director at the very end of the, I'm like feeling pretty good about myself at the end of this one day rehearsal and the director comes up to me and goes, you know what, tomorrow, imagine you're wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot me now. Fuck, <laughs> oh, really? I did that. Really? The, 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 I did a, you know, and she's a great director. I love her, but I was just miscast. Mm. I did, and nobody could have known because I didn't read for it. Yeah, yeah, I did a pilot with Brooke Shields. And I told you about that. Right. Where the showrunners didn't want me; they wanted Getty One and Nobby, Long Duk Dong. But Fox said, "No, we want Bobby." They oh, didn't want me. They boy. fought, but they but, then, <laughs> but Fox won. But when I showed up, I would do the table read and I would do rehearsals, and no one would laugh. Oh, and I had like a page and a half of dialogue. It was just one scene. Yeah. By the end of, by the showtime, I had one line. Wow. They cut it down. Wow. Right. And Brooke Shields didn't talk to me once. <laughs> I would show up to rehearsal. I had scenes with her. She wouldn't say hi. I mean, did you, the whole set hated me. Did you, did you show her your penis the first time? No. <laughs> I, don't Korean do that, I don't do that in a corporate environment, James. <laughs> right. <laughs> But you knew who I loved well, during that process. She's from Blue Lagoon. She's okay with it. Yeah, with a nudity. David Swimmer, <laughs> he directed it. Oh, really? Schwimmer? And Swimmer, Schwimmer every day would walk up. To, is that his name? Schwimmer. 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 Yeah. yeah, the Schwimmer. David Schwimmer. 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 Schwimmer would come up to me every day and go, "I'm so sorry they cut out two two chunky things, and you're now down to the like." Every day he would have to give me bad news, but he did it in a way that he was on my side. Yeah, Sweet. he's a good dude. That's what a GW. director needs to be is like somebody you can access and like yeah. be cool with and like come up and have a conversation because it's really like that's what I realized doing all the jobs that I did on the show is that it's all fucking guesses like a script is a guess yeah I hate that the program is called Final Draft it's a fucking guess yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. rebrand you're that guessing what's going to work on its feet and if you're so insistent that it's a Final Draft you're going to miss the better idea that comes out of the Wow! You know, out of putting it on its feet. I lo- You know, can I say something? I really loved you on this today. I lo- oh, I'll be able. Dude. I'll be real because I I learned so much from you. Mm. It really did because I'm about to shoot Wednesday, and I had all these fears. I think I've he's you've lessened my fears. He might oh, not get boils tomorrow. I might not get boils oh, tomorrow good. because of you. At the oh, end, good. we do this thing called unhelpful advice. Yes, we read an email. And you don't have to answer it, but you're going to answer it. <laughs> uh, we all oh, we all put our it. two cents in, yeah. right? So go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby Kalila and People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World. <laughs> G- 
James <laughs> Vanderbeek. Yeah. yeah. You got to throw that out there. What year was that? Do you know? He's every year. It happened, <laughs> it happened twice. It happened in oh. 98. Oh, fancy. But then, so there was like, it happened in like 98. And then there was a lull for <laughs> until about like you 2000, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, something. Yeah. And that's when you go on fucking. And then, and then I got more beautiful again. Yeah. That's <laughs> by, when you by, get on by, your by, PFs, by, man. Pussy frenzies. But but you <laughs> <laughs> if I was on the people okay. top 50, right, I would be a frenzy monster. I believe you. Every day. <laughs> With the sounds. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Get the end. Recently, I listened to episode 56 of Tiger Belly, and you talked about character faults. My character fault in particular, I'm a, pers uh, a people pleaser and it drives me crazy. I can't handle rejection. When hanging out with friends, I sacrifice what I want to do to make them happy. With sex, I do all I possibly can to make it great for the girl while neglecting my sexual needs. What would you do if you didn't know how to make yourself happy? Dude in distress. And there's also some background on him. Uh, I'm 22 and I make very rash decisions. I tried to kill myself at 16 by arson. And I by spent arson? by arson and spent 14 months in jail and four inpatient treatments my choices in, uh, to involve people in my life are ruining my chances of living chris oh, oh my, god. my god the backstory really the backstory just really some... brought it to some yeah. Yeah. insight yeah. so he tried to kill himself by burning Ar him on fire yeah mm. it's arson that's yeah. a man right there oh, no stop stop, stop that stop, stop that, that. I'm, no stop. i'm just no I, i'm i don't condone killing, killing yourself, anyone yeah or killing anybody but he said he, was, he tried to kill Wait, himself oh. through arson. Yeah. Is that what he said? Yes, and he yeah. was also... That's a man! <laughs> to light yourself on fire? <laughs> Look at it! That's... Well, some, what, people take fucking pills and they go, I'm going to go out that way. That's a pussy way to go Look, if you're going to go. But my point is, is this... That's someone who's utterly hopeless. I'm so sorry, hopeless don't do that again. Yeah, don't I'll do that. say it again. Yeah, do it again, Gilbert. Do it again. Which one? Just read the Where? last line. Rewind. I'm going to rewind yeah. my thing. Background on me, I'm 22 and make very rash decisions. I tried to kill myself at 16, Stop. but... No... Is that better? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how should he... Uh, well, she, he's a people pleaser and he's unhappy. Oh, God. Oh God. Therapy? Um, <laughs> I feel like Bobby should just redeem yourself. I'm giving you an opportunity. All right. It, it, okay, here we go, man. Yeah. You want the real? Yeah. I'll give you the real. Give dude. us the real, please. When I was a kid, I went to three drug rehabs, okay? I was drug addicted. You know, everyone knows my story, mm -hmm. right? I tried to kill myself myself, okay? I killed myself myself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't mad enough to <laughs> do it by fire. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? I tried, so I relate to you and that. But so when you're, as a kid, you're right? Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm not done, I'm not done. I'm, let me finish it. Hear me out. <laughs> God. Just hear me out. Hear me out. Give me a chance. Okay. Go ahead. Will you give me a chance? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to start over. We can cut some of these things out, right? So check it out. Yo, dude. So when I was um, your age back in the day, um, I went to three rehabs. I tried to kill myself myself. I said myself. Why do I say myself myself? I don't know. <laughs> right? And, but what happened was um, my life didn't start until like my late... 20s really I went through a really dark mm -hmm. you know life mm -hmm. you know and um, I also didn't get a lot of pussies so uh, when I first had Jennifer Field at, at the age of 23 like I remember her going whole name social whole security name. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just throw it all out there when she was like just eat my pussy I never <laughs> I never eaten pussy before just hear me out just hear me out alright hear me out right and I like dedicated myself into make pleasing her and then afterwards I just wiped my face and I left I think I didn't even get a blowjob so it's like I'm I was like one of those guys too. Like I just wanted to please, but then in my thirties, you know, I you know I killed it. But my point is, is this: is that your life will get, your life will get better. Is that better? Yeah. Was that good? That was, what do you think? So your advice is just wait. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. <laughs> wait to because get Because you, you know, you grow up, you get he's older. He's twenty-two. He's so not. He's, he's young as a baby. He's not lying, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you your life gets better. People don't know when you're you in your fucking early twenties. You have no money except from him. Um, he was a lead in a fucking WDB sitcom at 20. But my point is, is that um, some people... It was a teen melodrama. I know. It was a... <laughs> um, back to this guy. Back yeah, to this I want... poor guy. <laughs> Let's get James Vanderbeek's view on this. So he, so he... 
so the the idea is well clearly like the at the root of this is not the fact that you want to please people it's that you don't love yourself mm -hmm. it's mm. a self esteem that's issue. what I meant to say I'm just not eloquent with my words so like um you know I heard somebody once say like the goal like love your neighbor as yourself the first thing you have to be able to do is love yourself otherwise you have no love mm -hmm. to give so if you want to turn it around you should have your own podcast be, <laughs> honestly well, what you, you should have your own fucking podcast finish. Oh, let's finish oh, stop, 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 stop. thank you buddy um so yeah if you if you want to put it through the prism of of like helping other people mm -hmm. then the first thing you got to do is figure out how to love yourself what to love about yourself and i would I would do one thing every day because you fucking deserve it. Mm -hmm. So not at the expense of anybody, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the other part is um, don't ever stop trying to please women in bed because it makes for better sex. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. That's not That's a bad thing. Like, yeah. so good advice. Keep up the good work, yes. buddy. See, yeah. I mean, I want... But I, also I'm make not... sure you take care of your needs there you too. Go. But yeah. also definitely focus on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. a very depressed teenager. Mm. And I think that so it just, I. Yeah. I think that it's just inevitable to go through those rough patches. Mm. I was in inpatient treatment. I tried to kill myself three fucking times. I was just a hot mess of a teenager. I couldn't deal with my father dying before my mm. very eyes. I couldn't deal with, you know, coming to the US from a new country. Mm. It was a lot of things being very poor, being very, there was a lot of things there. So it's, and even if, even, if I had a normal life or even if things were going well in my life, I, th I feel as though teenagers just go through that regardless. And it's just getting through knowing that that's a very pivotal part of growing up is the pain in you know, teenage angst. And like you said, you really got to find things that you do like about yourself and hold on to those. And I think that in time, the people pleasing will sort of start to, you know. Manifest. Yeah. Well, not manifest, but like reverse. <laughs> I, just like, I like that yeah. word. I like that word. Shut the fuck up with manifest, the manifestation. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> For wrong usage, wrong usage, but it's, it's that almost there. Cut that out. Manifest. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Chris. That was very dark. That's Listen, a dark I'm ending. Gonna just see, no, it was a great ending. It was a great ending. I don't care what you say. Okay. Okay, because we did what we did. That was a good podcast. Mm. I fucking that loved was, it. That was fun. That yeah. was really good. And can and, I and can I can I say to like I'm so happy you did the show. You're so fucking great in it. Uh, I sat in the editing room and I watched. I would dig through like takes and just find you. gems. And you. you're a fucking treasure. Oh, thank you. And I love you. You know, I love you too. And I'll, and I just say this, okay? Thank you for hiring me. And then also on top of that, um, I, I if it gets picked up again, I want to do it. And then um, I, I'm just really blessed. And thank you for having me involved in it. <laughs> um, he's going to be in uh, the new um, Alexander Payne movie. Check out Diplo on the thing. Uh, follow him on all the twi Twitter handles. Oh yeah, what are your uh, Twitter at, handles? Yeah. At Vander James. At Vander James. James. And um, and, what, if and if you're a fan of Disney Junior cartoons, I'm, I'm playing a vampire dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really? On a Disney Junior after, cartoon. After all that. Oh, really? After all that. <laughs> oh wow. Just, that just in case there's anybody out there who's going to tune in, uh, <laughs> Vampirina. Yeah. <laughs> I did it for my kids. So funny. That's awesome. Oh, and yeah. is there a premiere that they can go to and stuff or not? Um, I hope I there think is. October first it'll be on. Oh, uh, it's gonna be great. Yeah, I hope there is. And how old is your oldest? Six. Oh my god. Yeah. Four's enough. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like enough. Yeah. I don't know how he does it, but anyway, give James Vanderbeek a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Hey guys, and we're back. James Vanderbeek. He's a nice guy. He's very nice. And he is handsome. Dude, that guy isn't aging. He looks the same. <laughs> I remember um, that we were on, um, I went to go visit Bobby on set when they were um, um, filming uh, Diplo. Yeah. And he came to Bobby's trailer and um, he introduced myself. He introduced himself to my sister and I and my sister and I were like, oh my God, like he's an attractive man. For somebody, I mean, he just hasn't aged at all. He works What's out that? in the park and plays football <laughs> by himself. He's going to be ripped. Yeah. Um, you guys, uh, I want to make an announcement for LA Podfest. Ooh. LA Podfest is just a, um, it's an event. It's sort of like a convention where um, a lot of different podcasts are going to be 
um, performing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All your favorite podcasts. All your favorite favorite podcasts are in basically in one place, and um, Tiger Belly will be in the Gold Room at LA Podfest mm -hmm. on October. Mm -hmm. Seventh, uh, where there are Saturday, October Saturday, 7th October seventh at two p.m. at the Gold Room, and we're going to be there from two p.m. to four p.m. Important. So you can um, no. buy your tickets. Um, what's the website? Um, L A Podfest dot com. <clears throat> Just wait. We're yeah, L A Podfest dot com. Kobe, quiet. <clears throat> So yes, you can buy tickets to LA Podfest, and we're trying to fill up the room. So, and we'll probably you know meet and greet with everybody and answer you guys' questions. So, um, that's in two weeks. Yeah, yeah I want to say something about it. Okay, yeah. go ahead. And the whole uh, LA Podfest is three days: October sixth, seventh, and eighth. Also, this though, guys, listen, oh listen to me right now. <laughs> it's not the same, Mike. <laughs> Let me say this right now. It's it's important that y'all come out to support us <laughs> because um, we want to you know. We we want to show people that we're um, the real deal. The real deal. If no one shows up, we're not the real deal. Imagine if we had to perform to an empty room. Yeah, oh, we're God, not doing that. Do so that. everyone's invited. We're gonna do a meet and greet. Photos. Presents are needed. Presents? No, I mean, you don't have to. Need I mean, no. I mean, that's what I meant. You don't need to bring presents. Yeah. Is what I meant to say. Are not needed. <laughs> are not needed. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. To, I really didn't meant to say that. What did I say? Anyway, my their presence is needed. Their presence ah, is needed. Yeah. Is what I meant. But you don't need to bring actual presence. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. And then um, also, what, where's the um, the he headphones? Oh, the aftershocks. A a whoever the aftershock people, thank you for giving us. I um, uh, was. What was the dude's name? Was it Nick? Yeah, thank Nick, you. Nick, who sent us all the aftershocks headphones. You're amazing. Amazing. And thank Great you for products. giving all of us a pair. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what are our other announcements? Did we do a quick MMA minute? Bobby didn't watch the fight. I didn't watch it, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, just quick boxing. I'll be here. Boxing minute and MMA minute. Uh, <laughs> me and Kalala, we went to go see the uh, Canelo uh, and Triple G, Triple G fight. Uh, Kalala, your thoughts? Um, Great fight first. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a really entertaining fight, but it's exactly as I expected, and that is the W. I mean, boxing is the WWE. I knew that they were going to try for to get a second fight or, or a rematch out of this. So, and it's always that one lady judge, right? Mm -hmm. She scored one eighteen to one ten for Canelo. Mm -hmm. And even if you thought very Canelo wide, won, wide it wasn't spread. by that. It wasn't by that spread, spread at all. It was very wide. Yeah. So, um, I, I unfortunately it confirms to me always that boxing is still as fixed as ever even though there's nothing fixed about the actual fighting because those guys were really going at it and triple g looked amazing look i was not expecting that really oh i had canelo well, remember based on the last fight and i yeah. had Can i think we both had canelo i wanted canelo to win although i do like triple g a lot i like him too but i just thought canelo the younger guy was gonna get it yeah um but yeah we're gonna probably get a rematch of that so that's cool yeah and then your boy you and Jessica's boy, Luke Rockhold. Oh, no, that's his boy. Oh, that's the Bobby's android, boy. Rock, uh, Rock Lude. <laughs> Rock Lude, hold. Yeah. Luke Rockhold, uh, he won against David Branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, our takeaway from that, I think, it, even the whole room were like, that was a weird, not a Luke Rockhold. Yeah, it wasn't the usual fight. Luke Rockhold performance. Not the android, that... you know? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but... I love Luke Rockhold. I think he's probably one of the most talented guys out there. He didn't look like himself. He 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 looked to me, even though it was a win, that first round he came in sloppy. Just alone, the kicks. You know how he has a no because usually Luke Rockhold is very economical with his movement. Mm. Like he'll throw a kick, and he, but he'll only throw it if he knows it's gonna land somewhere and if it's gonna be like he's not one of those guys that throws um um uh, in check, numbers like checks like or like the, just like taps like jab jab kicks basically just checking yeah like he's very yeah he's economical about it but and, um but this time around he was throwing just some really unnecessary like sloppy kicks i also don't know anything about actual fighting so <laughs> i don't know no, i mean no, a guy but, won but so. you're right like even a lot of those martial artists that were there with us it was like you know luke rockle usually kicks full power and he changes yeah. it back it's so fast he would like throw it it would stay out there he wouldn't chamber the leg back and he got caught yeah. a couple times and then he got tagged so easily by a sloppy <laughs> stand-up guy yeah he didn't he not just look well to you yeah there was something different about he's coming off a loss he hasn't fought in a while so i would assume rust, I did, rust. but there isn't rust. such a thing come on dominic cruz guys there's no such thing as ring rust that's there's dominic no cruz thing. he's also come an on. android um, but, but yeah, any other thoughts on that fight? Um, no, I mean, I hope that, it, you know, in his next fight that he really comes out as 
the old Luke Rockhold. I mean, even when he was sick from a staph infection and on antibiotics, he still beat the shit out, out of a wide man. Wide, Jesus. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's Luke Rockhold. Yeah. That guy against David Branch isn't how I remember him or how I see him Fantasize usually. Fantasize about him, yeah. yes. I don't know. Um, anything else, George? No, that's it for me. Follow us on Instagram at Tiger Belly and on Twitter at the Tiger Belly and email us any questions at the Tiger Belly at gmail.com. We will update you on social media about what just transpired just now. Bye. And watch Diplo. Uh.